In the previous lecture, I explained what is mesh analysis and how to perform the mesh analysis and we saw the four steps required to perform the mesh analysis and now we are going to solve one problem using the mesh analysis and according to the problem, we are required to develop the mesh equations that is the KVL equations for the below given electrical network. Here you can see the given network six resistors are there in the network and two voltage sources are there providing v1 and v2 and in this question we are only required to develop the mesh equations or the kvl equations this means we are only required to perform first second and the third steps of mesh analysis there is no need to perform the last step in which we calculate the mesh currents after solving the KVL equations. So let's move on to the solution. And we know in step number one, we find out the total number of meshes. And if you look at the network, you will find there is one mesh here, second mesh here. And the third mesh is here so in total there are three meshes and in step number two we assign mesh currents let's say in the mesh number one current i1 is flowing and in mesh number two current i2 is flowing and in the third mesh current i3 is flowing now we will decide the direction of currents and i explained in the previous lecture that it is good to take the clockwise direction as compared to anti-clockwise direction if you want you can take the anti-clockwise direction but for convenience we will take the clockwise direction for all the currents so I1 is the current in the mesh number 1 flowing in clockwise direction. I2 is the current in mesh number 2 flowing in clockwise direction. And I3 is the current in the third mesh flowing in clockwise direction. So we are done with step number 2. Now we will move on to the third step which is the last step for this particular question. And in this step, we will develop the KVL equations or the mesh equations. And we will first develop the KVL equation for mesh number one. And we will start from this point. Now focus very carefully that how we are going to develop the equations. Because once you have the equations, you can easily solve them. Moving from this point in the direction of current I1, that is in this direction, we have one voltage source providing V1 and you can see that there is rise in potential. Therefore, I will write plus V1. Then we have one resistor having the value R1 and current I1 is flowing through this resistor and we know resistor dissipates the power therefore this will be the polarity of the voltage drop and the voltage drop will be equal to I1 multiplied to R1. So we have drop in potential, therefore we will have negative sign and the voltage is I1 multiplied to R1. Then moving forward, we have another resistor R2. Now this time current I1 is flowing in this direction but current i3 is also flowing in the opposite direction now remember one important point i gave you in the previous lecture i told you whenever you develop the kvl equations then you have to consider the current of the mesh whose kvl equation you are writing down to be the largest so out of i1 i3 and i2 I1 is the largest current while developing the KVL equation for mesh number 1. So here we have I1 and I3 and therefore we will take I1 to be the largest and therefore this will be the polarity of the voltage drop and the net current will be I1 minus I3 and the voltage drop is going to be I1 minus I3 multiplied to R2. 
and moving in this direction we have the drop in potential therefore we will take the negative sign net current i1 minus i3 multiplied to r2 then we have this resistor r3 i1 is flowing in this direction and i2 is flowing in this direction and we know i1 will be larger than i2 therefore this will be the polarity of the voltage drop and we have minus i1 minus i2 multiplied to r3 and then we have another voltage source providing v2 and moving in this direction we can see that there is drop in potential so we have minus v2 and then we will equate with zero so this is our first mesh equation which we have developed for mesh number one now we will develop the mesh equation for mesh number two and we will move in the direction of current i2 starting from this point we have plus v2 now i will write down the equation quickly after this we have minus i2 minus i1 r3 we are considering current i2 is larger than current i1 because we are developing the kvl equation for mesh number two and mesh number two is having the current i2 so i2 is the largest current as compared to i1 and i3 so we have minus i2 minus i1 multiplied to r3 then we have resistance r4 and we will have minus i2 minus i3 because i3 is flowing in this direction and i2 is flowing in this direction so we have minus i2 minus i3 multiplied to r4 after this we have current i2 flowing through this resistor so we have minus i2 r5 i2 r5 equal to zero so this one is our second mesh equation which we have developed for mesh number two now we will develop the mesh equation for mesh number three and this is homework for you you need to develop the mesh equation or the kvl equation for the third mesh and once you have your answer post it in comment section i will end this lecture here see you in the next one